This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this lecture is on something called uh, cost plus pricing. And certainly one of the um, jobs of the management accountant is to help management decide on what selling prices to charge for the products. Uh, and there are all sorts of things they'll take into account. Uh, for instance, they'll say, see, uh, are there any competitors selling the same product? And if so, what price are they charging? Uh, because clearly, if we charge more than competitors, uh, then unless we can claim there's something very special about our product, uh, nobody's going to buy from us. Um, so there are all sorts of factors we'll consider, but one obvious factor is that in any normal situation, will want to sell at a price higher than cost in order, obviously, to be uh, making a profit. Um, and one approach um, that's reasonably common is to have a standard policy that our selling prices always will take whatever the cost of the product was and add on a fixed percentage. And that, as you'll see, is cost plus pricing. Um, so let me explain. First of all, with example one, uh, Peter has prepared a cost card for a product as follows. So I'm not going to write down the whole cost card on the screen, but materials $10, labour 5, variable overheads 2, fixed overheads 3. They've ended up with a cost, they've estimated a cost of $20 per unit. And do note, and in arriving at that cost, they have absorbed the fixed overheads. Um, this is the absorption cost or the full cost. We said enough in the early chapters about absorption costing and where those figures may have come from. But they've got a cost of $20 a unit. And it says they arrive at selling prices <laughs> by adding on a markup of 20%. Well, the definition of a markup, the markup is the profit as a percent of the cost. So maybe that's their policy throughout the business, you know, maybe they've lots of products, but they have a standard policy, we'll fix the selling price always at cost plus 20%. So what have we got here? The cost is 20. Uh, they're adding on a markup. 20% of 20, uh, which is $4. And so they'll fix a selling price at $24. As simple as that. So there we are. That is full cost pricing, full cost plus. Uh, one small thing before I say more about it um, is that here their policy was to add on 20% of cost. It was a markup, but it can be expressed in a different way. Uh, look at example two. Paul has prepared the following costing for a new job. Again, materials, labour, variable overheads, fixed overheads. In example two, Again, they have absorbed the fixed overheads and they've got a full cost or an absorption cost of 18,000. However, this time it says they require a margin of 20%. Now, you saw in the previous one, if it's a markup, that's the profit as a percent of the cost. That's easy, just add on 20%. But when it's a margin, the margin is the profit as a percent of the selling price. So they are going, they are going to add on a profit. The selling price will be higher than 18,000, maybe 20,000, maybe 25,000. But they want to fix the selling price in such a way that the profit they get is, in this case, 20% of the selling price of the revenue. And I think the simplest way of looking at it 
Some people like to use little x's and bits of algebra. But what I always do is this. For every $100 selling price, we'll go back to our question in a minute, but for something they sell at $100, they want the profit or the margin to be 20% of the selling price. Uh, so $20. And if the uh, profit's going to be $20, it must mean the cost is 80. And so putting it the other way, for every $80 cost, whoops, the selling price will be 100. If they sell at 100 and the cost was 80, they are making a profit of 20% of 100, a profit of 20, or a margin of 20. So we've got to make sure that for every $80 cost, we end up with a selling price of 100. So back to our question, the cost is 18,000. And if the cost is 18, surely the selling price, oh dear, my writing, well, it's $100 for every 80 cost, so it'll be 100 for every 80 of the cost of, what was it, 18000 And so they'll fix the selling price of 22500 And make sure you've got it. I mean, it does check, but in the exam, for heaven's sake, don't waste time checking. But if they have a selling price of 22500 remember they wanted the margin to be 20% of selling price. And 20% of 22500 is what, 4500 and so, if they're making a profit of four and a half on a selling price of 22 and a half, that must mean the cost is 18,000. <coughs> so it does work, but I say again, don't waste time checking in the exam. But do be careful. Uh, remember the difference. If they tell you that the profit is a markup, it's easy, just add that percent of cost as we did in example one. If, on the other hand, they tell you the profit is a margin, percent of selling price, then that is, there's that little bit of extra workings needed to decide uh, what the profit added on will be and therefore what the selling price will be. So that's just learning the words and being careful. However, that was full cost pricing. And that's fine. Look back at example one in, uh, for a moment. Example one, the cost for materials, 10, labour, 5, variable overheads, 2, fixed overheads, 3, a total of 10, 17, 20. And fair enough, if it's costing $20 a unit, and we are down at 20% profit, and fix a selling price of 24. Now that's what we did before, that's just following the instructions. Fine, obviously we'll make a profit, but will we? Because the little problem is this. Where did those fixed overheads come from? Surely to get the fixed overheads, we'll have been absorbing. And we went through enough in the early chapters about how we go about absorbing. But, and I'm making up figures here, I'm inventing figures, it may have been that, oh, maybe we thought the total fixed cost, well, let's say 30,000. Maybe the budgeted production was maybe 10,000 units. And therefore I got $3 per unit. Now I've invented those figures. 
You know, it was irrelevant for example one. We just took the figure and added the percent. But that $3 a unit will have come from absorbing. And when we absorb, we'll say, oh, what do we expect the fixed cost to be? What do we expect we're going to produce? No problem. We end up fixing a, a price of 24. But what about this? Maybe if we were to charge a lower price, if we were only if we were to charge, say, 22 or 23, maybe we'd sell a lot more units. Not necessarily, but often, of course, the lower the price, the more people buy, the higher the price, the fewer people buy. So maybe if I were to charge a lower price, I could sell more. But of course, if I was going to sell more, fixed overheads themselves would still say at 30,000. But if we were going to sell, say, 20,000 units, the fixed cost per unit would be lower. The cost would be lower. And of course, if the cost was lower, even adding on 20%, we could afford to sell at a lower price. And that's a little problem for us, that with full cost plus, arithmetically it's easy, but the problem is deciding how many we're going to produce in order to get the full cost to absorb the fixed overheads. That's a problem. And so an alternative approach is to avoid that problem with fixed overheads is to use what we call marginal cost plus. And it's exactly the same uh, approach, except that instead of adding a percent to the full cost, we add a percent to the marginal, the variable cost. So look at example three. Mary has prepared a cost card for a product as follows. Materials, $8. Labour, $5. Variable, $3. But on a marginal costing approach, don't bother absorbing the fixed overheads. We've ended up with a marginal or a variable cost of $16 a unit. So same idea as before, but we're not absorbing the fixed overheads because of that problem, knowing how many units there are going to be. Their policy, they arrive at selling prices by adding a markup of 40% to the marginal cost. Well, we've already been through the uh, definition of markup. So they'll take the marginal cost of 16. They'll add on the markup of 40% of 16, which is what? $6.40. And as a result, if this is their policy, they'll fix a selling price of 22.40 per unit. So again, it's an easy exercise. I said before, be careful whether it's markup or margin. And obviously, as a result of what I've just done, be careful as to whether the question wants full cost plus or marginal cost plus. Uh, the beauty of marginal cost plus, of course, is we haven't had to absorb the fixed overheads. I won't repeat what I said before about the problem. However, even with marginal costs, we've still a problem because, of course, there are still going to be fixed overheads. That markup is the contribution. There are still going to be fixed overheads. And so when we decide what percent to add on, we obviously need to add on a bigger percent than before uh, because there are going to be fixed overheads. And the question in real life is, of course, what percent do we actually need? And so neither method is perfect. Uh, for the exam, it, it, it's clearly just following instructions. Is it full cost plus? Is it marginal cost plus? Are you given the percent as a markup or are you given it as a margin? So there we are. That was a relatively short chapter.